Big or small, what is something you've done that you're proud of? Write down what you think about it, what you're proud of, what you've done. Have fun watching. Story 1. Two reboot resilient PowerShell scripts I wrote, albeit with lots of help from the internet. The first one I use for reinstalling Windows. I extended the functionality of a few of the CM dealets into the Microsoft Winget Client PowerShell module into my own modules, so I can automatically install a batch of software from online sources. Vast majority are from the Winget Package Manager. Make changes to settings. Install Windows updates. Install my custom theme. Log how long the script took to file on the desktop. And all without without user interaction, so I don't have to babysit it. It's also robust enough that checks if PowerShell Core, Winget, and the PowerShell modules the script uses are installed or need to update it does so and handles errors when installing software gracefully instead of crashing, hanging the script. The second one is much smaller and simpler. My custom theme doesn't play nice with Windows Update, so it uninstalls my custom theme, installs Windows Updates, and reinstalls the theme. It's not much. It's ultimately meaningless, in fact, but it's what I got. Story 2. Standing up to my abusive dad on multiple occasions. Eldest sister, child, self-appointed meat shield at a young age. It's made me a lot tougher which helps with the CPTSD LOL. Earning my degree and getting to use it. Getting out of bed this morning, TBH? I wept twice before noon because of what's going on in Gaza and Iran. I've been going through a lot of health problems dealing with multiple sexist doctors who don't listen and take me seriously. And sometimes I want to stay there forever, possibly not wake up. My husband, mom, and some family, and my friends that are family really helped me keep going. Story 3. Survived my first marriage. That one was close biggest and best accomplishment. Defended an innocent man against a filthy police officer who beat him up because the cop was frustrated. Literally, no other reason. My client was the one who called the police to report a crime. Then the cop just attended and lost his head. At first, I thought the cop might have been traumatized. Then I found out from fellow officers that this one was known to be a certain way by colleagues. Yuck. As an organization, the police defended the case to the bitter end. Fairly sure that was a policy decision. But we won in court, because, you know, evidence. Really, really clear evidence. Had a few wins like that over time, but this one sticks in my brain because we really had to fight. Bunch of procedural impediments threatened to derail us, but we got there. Evidence matters. Helped my wife get a restraining order against her ex, which remains in place. The Joker fought it like crazy, meaning my wife had to be re-traumatized to tell her story again. But listening to the methodical verdict, which forensically dissected this abusive piece of work to his face, when he had no option but to sit there and quietly absorb it, while his ego must have been raging equal sign, asterisk gourmet kiss, asterisk. So, so, so satisfying. When you see someone who's never been held to account in their life get their butt handed to them, it's very, very asterisk, very asterisk special. Story 4. When I was in, I think, 8th or ninth grade, I did a school project where I wrote a storybook, and my friend made a coloring book. We made so many, and we delivered them to the biggest children's hospital in the country. We brought smiles to so many faces. There was this one girl in a wheelchair who was so happy about what's happening, and she followed us around everywhere. There was a mother crying in their child's bed while they were in surgery, and we gave her the books, and that brought a huge smile on her face. Story 5. I started my own business from my hobby. Just before lockdown, I started taking silversmithing lessons and then kept practicing. Now I've turned that into my job. I make coffee-themed jewelry like silver rings with a silver coffee bean on it and love it. It lets me go to coffee festivals across the UK and also work from home. It's not big enough that it makes a lot of money, but it's enough to help and allow me some freedom. Best thing I could say is if you ever think about going self-employed, do it. Story 6. I am sending two kids to college on my own. I am a single parent, no child support, and a teacher living in the most part-expensive area of the U.S., Silicon Valley. I worked three jobs before the pandemic and got loan forgiveness for teaching in high-poverty schools. It's still a monthly struggle, but I'm hoping my kids have stable jobs by the time I retire. I also told off their deadbeat dad last week. Took me 20 years to do that. Story 7. Made a modification of an old Torque game, Marble Blast, called Stop Deluxe. You roll a ball through many eclectic courses, collecting teapots and blasting through universes to find and defeat a great foe. It has many features once thought to be impossible after 2007. Online leaderboards, events, animated GUI, moving objects, object culling, and so much more. After about a year, it's just shy of 1,000 players, and although traffic is small, 
It's well-known, respected, and popular in the Marble Blast community now. Story 8, first semester in college. My dorm floor did a secret Santa gift exchange with a modest price limit. I think it was like $1.10 or so. I knew the girl that I had to get a gift for really loved her art class and professor. She talked about it often, so I reached out to the professor and met with her during her office hours and convinced her to sell me a painting of a flower within the price limit. It was just a small, simple painting with a signature, but her work would normally go for hundreds or thousands, so it was very generous of her to meet with me when I wasn't even her student and then sell me a painting after hearing the situation. I still feel good about facilitating that gift. I wish I knew how to give people meaningful gifts like that more often, but it feels like the stars really have to align. Story 9 I was going through a really hard time at work, had to leave as my resting heart rate went from 48 to 130. My doctor said I was on my way to death. So I took two years off and wrote approximately 15 novels. These weren't fuck about novels. The shortest, I think, is 108,000 words. I've continued to write. I've been an Amazon best-selling author. I've got actual fans. Friends, this doesn't make a lot of money, but it's a lot of fun. I admire how I turned something that was fuck Emma die into here is a legacy I'm proud of. My writing slowed a lot recently, back at work, etc. But those 15 books in two years really stand out to me. It all started because my wife said, they canceled Firefly, write me that. So, inspiration. Story 10. Staying out of the mental health hospital for over two years now while quitting therapy and medications for my BPD while not attempting to end my life anymore. Threpy and medications were not improving my mental health at all. In fact, both were doing more harm than good to my mental health and general health and decided against all medical advice not to quit either. But I did, and it was the best decision I ever made. Used to self-isolate in a dark room all day. Zoned out on medications, thinking constantly to end my life. But one morning, I woke up feeling differently. Hard to describe what happened, but I knew I didn't want to continue living like this. So I quit therapy and gradually cut down my medications little by little until I eventually don't take any meds no more. Feel like I have my faculties back. I suffer from social anxiety also, but now force myself into difficult positions I don't want to be in to overcome things. I'm not magically cured and will always suffer with both. But I refuse now to let it consume years of my life as it has done, so I'm proud of that. Story 11. Hope you are well, beautiful soul of God, and having a blissful, the 26th of April, 2024. I hope you experience Bhagwan, Allah, God's blisses, and joys on this beautiful day. And your day is genuinely filled with joy, peace, and love. So I guess the biggest one was taking the suffering for this creation, humanity, and saving this entire world from an impending Armageddon, along with the higher beings with works done on the streets of Marseille. This was predicted by one of those beings at one point, estimating that this Armageddon could wipe out 99.9% .9 of this world's population as suffering of this world got too much. At one point, Plan B looked likely too, as the suffering got too much for us, and we were almost ready to jump ship. But genuinely, we managed it. Just about. We looked like beggars to the outside world and still do. Some good messages at bottom of this page. Despite huge obstacles. Yeah, so saving this entire world in 2022 with work's done. True story. Kind of proud of it if I do say so myself. God's biggest shocker ever. A J from Inbetweeners moment, or the greatest real-life Inbetweener in human history back as the boy from Bolton. Written from the real-life city of God. Bolton, UK. God is the greatest no matter what. Round the corner from Cannon Street, home to a mesmerizing mosque, a beautiful church, now apartments, and a stunning temple, God is one. Peace, joy, bliss, love, have a genuinely beautiful day, M. 2024. People hungry, wars, betrayals, knifings, atheism, obsession over a piece of paper to point of self-destruction, atheism, lack of spirituality, lack of fun, smiles, joy, bliss. God is the greatest whether you believe me or not. Read The Power of Now or A New Earth by Bhagwan Sri Eckhart Tolle. If you are not experiencing joy, bliss, love in this beautiful experience of life frequently non-religious text, read my guidances on cancer. If you know a cancer sufferer and believe him, they would help millions overnight for free. Protocols developed using intelligence way above that of doctors and during the pancreatic cancer illness of L. Chemo alone will never cure cancer. And reader, life is the dancer. You are the dance Bhagwan Sri Eckhart Tolle, Hermes Tremestigus in a fourth incarnation. Story 12. Made friends with another autistic person from a different country. Found out by chatting with her that her mom's boyfriend was abusing her, physically and sexually, with her mother supporting it all. I told her that she should tell her dad. So, 
She did. Mom was arrested. Boyfriend went on the run. Mom was convicted. Boyfriend died from a drug OD while still on the run. Mom killed herself in prison from the shame. Or maybe she was killed. It was a tough country to be in prison in. At any rate, I saved her life, and now she's got a great family who takes care of her. Because she will need to be taken care of for the rest of her life after what they did to her. It's a shame I wasn't able to be there sooner and stop all or most of it. But I did a good thing, and I'll always be proud of myself for that. Story 13. Learned the basics of C-C++, Java, SQL, HTML, CSS, XML, and JavaScript, and 3D art and animations on my own because I was bored and alone all day, and I've made five apps and five games. I've been focusing on C-Hash, XAML, and SQL because they fit my needs better. I quit school for like five years because of mental health, and I remember how my math teacher said to my parents that I should go to a special ed school because I can't learn anything, and I won't manage with the other normal kids. I was like 13 years old at that time and spent the next few years learning 3D art and animations from YouTube. I've started school again at like 18 years old. We would go to school once a few months and also started learning programming in my free time because I had too much art in my PC and I thought I could use it to make games. Now I'm 23 and I'll soon finish high school. It's some kind of high school where you also learn how to do mechanics, but we don't really learn anything. Story 14. Survived bipolar disorder long enough to be on pretty effective meds, I think. They've been working for approximately three months now, so we'll see if I'm truly stable as more months pass. But shit. Life has been so much better and I can actually visualize having a future instead of being certain that I would die by suicide. I feel alive for the first time in a long while. Pray for me. Story 15. Today there was a very senior citizen who asked me for the time at the gym. I did my best to estimate the time for him as I forgot my phone in the car. When I got to my car, I realized I was a half hour off. I felt bad about potentially throwing him off schedule, so I walked the two minutes back to tell him. He ended up reciting an Eagles song to me, and at that point I figured he may have just been senile. Still, I wanted to make sure to give him the best answers I could, and I'm proud that I could give him the truth, even though he probably asked from a place of dementia lol. Story 16. I grew up in poverty, so I worked my ass off to get good grades and get into a decent uni. I later got my bachelor's in engineering, and honestly, it's the first time I'm admitting I'm proud of it. When I was in college, I was while dealing with a mental health crisis and was suicidal. I had been expediting episodes of psychosis, and it made my life so difficult. It was so hard to just get out of bed every day and go to class. I didn't have any proper support. I decay why it was so hard, but I did it and I'm proud. Story 17. I managed to get my end driver's license. It took a lot of time for me to work up the courage to go and take the learner's test because of my epilepsy. Technically, you can go take it after you've been seizure-free for six months on medication or one Y without meds. You also need a form filled out by a doctor saying it's okay for you to drive. I was two I or so seizure-free before I went and took the test because I was so scared and nervous, but I did it. Overall, my record for longest time without a seizure is 3 I had one about a year after I got the license. I usually have them about once a year, usually in the spring. May is very common. My last one was in June 2023. Story 18. Developed a test that enabled a couple with a 1 in 4 chance of having another baby who would die from genetic disease at 9 days to tell if their fetus was affected or not. They held off getting pregnant until I was 100% sure the test would distinguish affected from unaffected. We did the test on amniotic fluid when they fell pregnant. It was negative, and they went on to have a healthy baby boy. I've achieved many things I'm proud of, like being the first person in my extended family to go to university, get a PhD, published three books, etc. But what I'm most proud of is having been able to use my skills to prevent a couple going through the heartbreak of losing a baby a second time. Story 19 I bought and installed a 400-gallon water tank at my stepmother's house in the Philippines. My dad had the house built in 2006 and plumbing installed, but they never had it connected. The water from the barangay, a.k.a. city, runs at a trickle only from 9 p.m. to around 3 a.m. every other day. So my relatives used to have to stay up until 3 in the morning half the days of the week to fill one barrel, then another, then another. Now the house has running water coming out of the tap. In some places, having basic utilities is a luxury. I'm happy that I made her home more luxurious. Story 20. I was working on a wind turbine project in Parsons K's. I became regular at a local sports bar. Ballers frequent this place, so I'm vocal and a show-off. One night I was hanging with gang, one very beautiful young lady, happens to be the mother of a very young daughter, and the daughter happens to be champion barrel racer, was in the crowd among the guys. 
As the night progresses, a group of mid-twenties walk in. They were celebrating a friend's birthday. I get introduced to girls and end up with her. She was five at four in, and about as stacked as a brick shit house. Big booty, big boobies, and turned 26. I'm 52. Wait, I'm 223. Hash her 320 hash, easily I rocked her world. Let in come soaked sheets, raw thighed and come oozing out her holes. She told the whole bar, and let's say, I never bought another drink and I had my pick of the bunch. Story 21. I took a construction training course. Did you know that they move the planks on scaffolding to a higher level to be able to work higher up the side of the building? Do you know who has a teensy fear of heights and had the job to lift up the planks up and hand them to co-workers on the higher level? Me, you lift every last one until there are none to stand on. I don't remember what I did then, but it was planned and I survived. Woo. Story 22. I once made a shit post on the Star Trek shitposting Facebook group about why people who hate New Trek are weird and dumb, and it got to over 5,000 likes, and several people suggested I pitch it as an article for Star Trek's official website. So I did, and my pitch included a direct link to the shitpost in question. I was expecting a funny rejection from them, but they offered me several hundred dollars to flesh it out into a feature-length article, and that is how I ended up getting paid to write for the official website of my favorite TV franchise of all time. Story 23. Make black and white photo prints using my 1910s camera. Took weeks of waiting for things to arrive. Hours of disassembling and cleaning, oiling the camera, taking the photos, developing the film, setting up a very janky dark room, a crappy little device for copying the negatives, and finally seeing the images appear on paper. All and all took almost a month to get the first images. Now that I have supplies, it takes me about an hour to get images out of the camera and onto paper. Story 24. I bought a one-year around-the-world air ticket in my 30s and brought my guitar, mostly to help me meet people as I was traveling solo. I was busking on the streets of Queenstown, New Zealand, and a club owner approached me and asked if I could play that night in his club. From that night on, I realized I could do that pretty much anywhere. Fast forward to Ios, Greece. I played in the clubs on that island for the summer. With the summer season finished there, I flew to Thailand, and found work singing on Koh Samui for the winter in the clubs there. Bounced back and forth between the two islands with the seasons for more than eight years. One doesn't need to be a digital nomad to travel freely for years. A non-digital nomad lifestyle worked just fine for me. Story 25. I turned 24 in a little over a week, and just last week I finally got my own place. My parents kicked me out as soon as I turned 18, as soon as they legally could. I wasn't a bad kid, but I didn't react the way they wanted to, to the way they treated me, I guess. So they got rid of me. To make a very long story short, I was homeless for a while. I had no family anymore. I had no friends. There were no women's or children's shelters I could go to because I am a man. So I had to make it on my own. So I decided to embrace it. For a couple of years, I hopped trains and hitchhiked around the country. I busked with my banjo for money so I could eat. But that lifestyle catches up with you quick. And before I even knew what I did wrong, I was chemically dependent on multiple substances, with alcohol being the worst. With no job or obligations, and enough spare change for another bottle, I had no reason to not start drinking as soon as I woke up. At first, it was because I wanted to. Then, it was because I needed to. I legitimately had to, or I would die. I've been through medical detox three times, and I've had seizures and DTs every time, even with medication. When I tell people I'm an alcoholic, they just assume I can't handle my liquor, or I'm a stupid drunk or something like that. And that's why alcohol is a problem for me, when in fact it's the opposite. I can handle my liquor. And I am a very clever, sharp-witted drunk. If I weren't, I wouldn't have been able to come up with enough money to stay drunk. The fact that I can handle my liquor is more of a problem than if I couldn't. I was on a bunch of other stuff, too. But alcohol is the one that got a hook in my mouth. Alcohol is the one that has almost killed me more times than I can count and likely still could, depending on how bad the damage is that I am, as of yet, unaware of. Anyway, yeah, homeless, substance abuse, freight trains, all that punk stuff. But a week ago, I finally got my own place. I've had two apartments before now, both with roommates who stole from me and fucked me over, and one rented house with an ex who cheated on me even though I paid all the bills. But finally, after six years of trying to make it on my own, I have my own fucking place. No roommates, only $650 slash mo, all bills paid, two blocks away from work, so I don't have to drive. But even if I did want to drive, I have my own truck that I bought in cash that is completely and totally mine. Fuck, man, I'm still broke all the fucking time. As we speak, I'm $34 overdrawn and all I have is ramen. 
but I'm better off than I've ever been before, and tomorrow is payday. Might treat myself to some McDonald's by driving there in the truck that I own and pay for it with the money from the job that I have and then take it back to my place to eat it. I have my own place. It's mine. For the first time in my life, I have a little place to live that is just for me. Story 26. Every single time I see my son, four, help someone, it makes me so damn proud. I once saw him comfort a kid who had only minutes ago pushed him over and taken his toy. I was laid out on the lounge sick and his little sister started crying and he said it's okay daddy I'll help her and went and calmed her down. I don't know if he got it from me or his mum or figured it out on his own, but the empathy he has for everyone warms my heart to the point of tears. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Be sure to write comments and share your stories.